Hey kids, it's time for another episode of Kitty Cat Gaming with your host, Mortimer! KKG! KKG! Yay! Hey everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Kitty Cat Gaming. I'm back with Aaron. Hi. <laughs> Yunji was just telling the story about the Russian or whatever. Yeah, uh, she was almost telling us a story about how she fucked up giving a tour at Mengsman? Uh, I'm not oh, sure on the name. Oh, and Mansudai. Mansudai. Don. Mansudai. Uh, so we're gonna go there on our date today. Yay, Woohoo! with Junji. Yeah, a different girl. Jungjo. I thought we couldn't date her at all, so I'm pleasantly surprised. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay, I swiped his oh, it's... I swiped his phone and stomped on and they gave me probation. Oh, because he took a picture. Now you don't have to buy the young lunch from yeah. You really you really are such a child at times, Yunji. Don't worry about it. I'm sure there are other Yunji stories you can swap me for lunch. I hate you both! <laughs> Just get already! Go on your date, have fun, I'll be here with my pity celebration. Aw, don't be like that, Yunji. When we get back, I'll help you with your English. If you're done with your pity party by then. Don't they have to work? Yeah, well, I think they're like, this is their work right oh. now. Okay. My English is fine, I'm going to my room. Yunji crosses her arms in anger as she tries to storm out. I'm sorry, Yunji. I'll miss you today. I see you every day, so I probably won't. <laughs> I thought you were the sweet one. What's with all the jabs today? Military secret. You'll understand next year. Part of your training involves teasing your sister? Teasing friends in general. It's the best way to gain people's confidence so you can manipulate them into giving up state secrets. Whoa. Well, that woman charms. Okay. But enough about work. Let's get ready. I'm beginning to feel extremely uncomfortable. Then you should change into some comfortable clothes. It's going to be fairly warm today. Meanwhile, you'll be dressed in full uniform, making me feel even more out of place. Yes, that's the rule for our tour guides. Be in full dress whenever you're out on duty. I brought my Marine Corps' motto, motto shirt. I could wear that. You could if you like the idea of running from the local authorities all day. I know, I know. Low profile. I wonder what you'd look like in one of our uniforms. The outfit for the man was a little plain, but <laughs> which could go perfect with your personality. Ooh, mean. And here I thought I won you over with my sharp wit and winning smile. Don't let her fool you. She's totally smitten with you. Is that a, fa a fact? Wait, what? Hold on. It's not like a... <laughs> Johnson, the, 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 the one always writing about you in her diary. Ooh. How sweet you are. How cute you are. How she wants to kill. Whoa. In a flash, Young and Yuji had... Uh, has Yunji in a headlock and is dragging her back to the bedroom. Wow. Yunji is wailing the whole way. A few short moments later, Jiang is back in the living room with her, slightly too friendly smile. At this rate, we'll be here all day. Follow me. You can get changed into your outdoor clothes so that we can go. I know where the be bedroom is. You don't have to lead me everywhere. Wait, uh, what? Unless you plan on changing me, too. A tempting offer, but now while Yunji is around, she might get angry. I don't see why. It doesn't seem like she'd take in that great interest in me. Most of the time, she just insults me. I see the rumors about American men being clueless about women holds true. Anyway, get ready. The trolley bus will be here soon. Okay. She leads me to go get ready herself. Well, nothing left to do but get dressed. I'm not sure what's up with these two. It seems more and more like they're competing over me. Here I thought I was just going to be touring with some military buds. And now I've got two girls fighting over who gets to go out with me. Well, it could be worse. It's not like I was the most in-demand guy back home. Goddamned boot lieutenants with all of their bling. Heh, I remember that one stupid second lieutenant we had in Hawaii. That dude was an idiot. And yet, he kept getting award after award. Man, love the backstory. Ugh, we used to call him the bling for her behind his back. Heh, <laughs> good times. Anyways, this vacation would, go, would be so much better if I weren't constantly being spied on by those two. Still, they're both pretty damn cute. After tossing on a pair of jeans and a plain t-shirt, I grab my wallet and phone and step out. As expected, Jiang is in full dress uniform. Yunji is nowhere to be found. Mm. Hmm. Where could she be? I guess Yunji didn't want to, s want to see us off then? She's a little busy in her room blowing off some steam. Mm. Anyway, the trolley bus will be here in a minute, so let's wait outside. And we're waiting. <laughs> Jung doesn't even wait for my reply. She grabs my hands and leads me out the door. Yeah! And as she said, the trolley bus is just about to pull up out to the door. I wonder how she managed to get the tram to give her service at the door. She pulls me up and leads me all the way to the back. No one else is aboard yet. I apologize, our regular driver's out sick today, so we'll be on this tram today. It may take a little longer than usual to arrive, though. That's okay, we can just relax and check out the view then. Looking at the trolley bus, I can see why it'll take longer. This clunker, this clunker has been around since the 1970s, and from the looks of it, the bus was made in some Soviet bloc country. Yes. I think the markings on some of the equipment making of the trolley bus is in check. 
maybe Hungarian. Well, whatever country produced it, by all rights, it should be, rushing, uh, should be resting in a scrapyard back there. Instead, it appears to be part of the Korean mass transit system. As it moves, I can hear the engine creak and grumble under the weight of the 50 years of abuse. Seriously, I think I saw a guy on a bicycle pass us, and he was pretty chubby. You know, that's the first fat person I've seen in the entire country. Well, except the big man himself. My thoughts are interrupted as I feel something lightly fall on my shoulders. It appears Jong, tired of fighting with Yoonji, has liberally made use of my shoulder as a pillow. Not that I mind. I could get used to this. Jiang sleeping asleep on my shoulder? Mm. The look I'm getting from some of the other people who have filtered onto this bus over the last hour are weirding me out, though. You know, that really is the worst part. Every person here either looks terrified of me or like they want to kill me. Yuji falls into the leader category. And Jiang, well, I guess she doesn't fall in either. I'm oh, great. Sounds like the brakes are about shot on this death trap, too. Add that to the list of things wrong with this country. What was that line? We live, we die, we die again? Yeah, that sums this up. The walls shake at the slightest bump. The seat belts are ripped out. Most of the windows are sealed shut, and I'm pretty sure there is a spring from the seat making its way up my ass. <laughs> We'd be safer and more comfortable in that car that we've been taking everywhere. I will never bitch about the noise from our tanks ever again, or being shot at while in one. At least it takes more than a gust of wind to take out our tanks. This death-defying ride is making another tour of Afghanistan sound downright cozy. All right, we get it. <laughs> the brakes must have startled Jong as she's lifting her head slightly. Are we who we are yet? No, we aren't dead yet, nor are we at our destination. Our ride through purgatory will continue. She nods and puts her head back down. I rest my hand slightly on her shoulder. Thanks, that feels nice. I'd say it was worth it, except all the locals getting on the bus look really astonished. Seeing a foreign white dude with his arm around a sleeping member of the Korean military. Dairy. Uh, however, they don't say anything, so I guess it, maybe it was worth it. After another harrowing bus hour, which felt more like 20 hours, we finally arrive at our destination and get off the bus. Manzu die. Oh, how beautiful. This is the Pyeongchang District, home of the Manzu Day Art Studio. Oh, those are beautiful paintings. This is where all of our vital works of art are created and is one of the largest centers of art population in the world. Uh, production. Uh, uh Production. <laughs> that sounds like the first fact I've heard since I've got to this country. This place is huge and so many people everywhere. With all of the outdoor and indoor sections combined, this is easily the largest art studio I've ever seen. It is impressive, isn't it? So many wonderful pieces of art have come from here. But let's not just but let's not just stand here and talk about it. Let me show you around. She grabs my hand and leads me to a large outside monument. By the looks of it, I'm starting to question if I'm in Korea or the former Soviet Union. So yeah, hammer and sickle, those are definitely old school communism symbols. But why the paintbrush? It's a calligraphy brush. It symbolizes the intellectuals in union with the workers and farmers. And the red buildings flanking the monument? They're meant to, re they're, they're meant to represent the, fra the flags. The words atop say, ever victorious. By why the, uh, I suppose say, but why the communist symbols? Well, our country has moved on from the traditional Marxist communism into Juche. It is still a strong foundation of how our country came to be founded. Also, the circular foundation is 70 meters in diameter to symbolize the 70 years of the party and down with imperialism union when the monument was completed. Down with the imperialism? Yes. Remember before the lineage of the, of the glorious leader finally rested, rested control of our country? We had been <laughs> annexed into the traitorous Western Japanese Empire. Then ended after Japan's crushing defeat at the United States' hands in the Second World War. So in essence, this part of the monument is in celebration of no, no, Nippon? That may be the worst pun I've ever heard. You never met my drill sergeant. There are more monuments and other pieces to see. This is go, go, Nippon mm -hmm. reference. I think this whole game is a go, go, Nippon reference. I think it's the same company that made it. However, some of them may not leave you with a very good feeling. After all, the history between our countries is strained. I thought Korea and the United States were friendly with each other. Eh, not true with Korea, no. You're on good terms with the occupied part of the country. Up here, not so much. Some of the air art may disturb you. I've seen children with explosives trapped in them used as IEDs. I think I can handle some anti-American artwork. First, that's horrible. He would use an innocent child as a disposable weapon. Far better to train them with rifles and have them kill waves of foreign invaders like the Great War. Uh. Second, don't say it and warn you. Well, I'm glad to see there are still people shocked by kids being used as makeshift bombs. Wait, that's not much better. Kids don't make good riflemen anyway. The guns are too heavy. Better to have them operate crew-served weapons than they can carry it as a group, which helps build essential teamwork skills. That, that's an excellent point. I'll have to pass that idea on up. 
That was just, you know what? It's not worth arguing. Let's go inside. <laughs> Jiang nods and leads me by the hand into the main section of the art studio. All around us are different kinds of artwork, paintings, drawings, embroideries, and even woodcuttings. Honestly, they aren't that bad. I'm surprised by the quality. The themes are mostly of nature and the ever-present workers' party, though I notice a painter in one area working on something completely outside of those boundaries. Before I can head over, Jiang tugs on my sleeve. I have to use the facilities. Could you wait for me here? Facilities? Are you going to paint something? No, I mean, I have to make a stop at the restroom. <laughs> oh, you need to hit the head. Got it. Sure thing. I'll be here. Hit the head? You haven't done anything to warrant that punishment yet. What does that mean? I've never even heard that term before. Oh. Hit the head. Sorry, military jargon for go to the bathroom. Interesting. I may have to teach that one to Yunji. She might scare some soldiers with that expression. <laughs> anyway, I'll try not to take too long. Take your time. I'm not going to go anywhere. <laughs> Well, next time on Kitty Cat Gaming, we are going to explore the room while she's in the restroom. Uh, be sure that subscribe button so you guys don't miss it. And we'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody.